welcome to Phoenix, Arizona, and happy Sunday. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. We've got a WAC men's soccer matchup for you between the GCU Lopes and the visiting Utah Valley Wolverines. Friday night, GCU was able to hang around and get a draw against a 19th nationally ranked Seattle team who came in at 11-2-2. GCU looking to keep riding the hot goaltending of goalie Jack Jeremy Pollard and pick up the final two games of the season. I'm Alex Larson. He's Philip Katafimo. And tonight, the Lopes look to really ride Pollard. He played amazing against Seattle U, and they were that was a good team. Yeah, Jeremy Pollard with 14 saves on that game. He's got 63 on the season, and they're going to need him to be as clutch as possible. As you can see right there, number one, Jeremy Pollard. And he's going to have a very, very big task tonight. Utah Valley, a very, very good scoring team, led by Paul Hoffmeister with four, five goals, and the Lopes are going to have a bit of a yeah, a bit of a scoring match on their hands, but if Jeremy Pollard can continue his solid play, the Lopes should be able to walk away with a win. Well, in the series, Utah Valley 3-0 all-time against GCU. Last time they were in Phoenix, went down 2-0 and were able to salvage a 3-2 victory. So this senior class looking to get the first win against a Utah Valley team. Yeah, and they're going to have to do it by creating scoring opportunities in their last three games, Alex, the Lopes have only scored one goal apiece, so three goals in their last three games. They're going to need to create more opportunities. Only 15 shots. They were outshot by Seattle University. University. Thankfully, they did get the penalty score by Nikki Jackson to give them a goal on the board, and, of course, it ended in a draw. So they're going to need to get the scoring options going. They're going to need to get the shots up, and they're going to need to slow down Utah Valley and Paul Hoffmeister. Last time, Utah Valley, their last game against UNLV, they scored three goals on only six shots. So we talked about him earlier, but Jeremy Pollard, you see him on screen, is going to need to be at the top of his game tonight against a very good Utah Valley team. It was just that Friday night against Seattle, that team had numerous opportunities to score and really bury GCU, but keeping them in it was Pollard. And we are ready to go with the kickoff from the center. GCU sending it right down automatically and out of bounds. What are we going to look for early here in GCU and UVU's offense? Well, UVU is going to want to continue to do what they do best, and that's get into the box and try to get as many goals up as possible, whereas GCU is going to need to keep the defense strong. They've been doing a pretty decent job so far of keeping teams, you know, re re making sure that teams don't score a whole lot. Last game, they ended in a draw. The game before, unfortunately, 3-1 to one loss against Air Force and 2-1 to one against Kansas City. So the defense is going to need to be a lot stronger than it has been. And if they can do that, well, we might be in for a one fun game. Well, each team about the same record-wise. Utah Valley 6-8-2 and two with a 3-3-2 three, three, and two WAC record. For GCU, they're 6-9-1, and 3-4-1 and one in the WAC. As it's down the side already, this is... Moros Demos, and now he's going to send it in, but kicked out of bounds. So I like the early attacking right there from Demos. Yeah, much like the uh, women's team on Sunday against uh, CSU Bakersfield, looks like the Lopes are going to try to get as much attacking as possible in the box and create more opportunities. They're going up against keeper Jose Wheelwright as a corner comes. And in front, a chance missed to clear it out, and now... Sort of, quarter, sort of a half bicycle out of bounds for a goal kick. Well, good rebound by Josh Drack. Unfortunately, just unable to find the net. Yeah, missed opportunity to clear it there by the defender for Utah Valley. Didn't see exactly who that was. As Jose Wheelwright, the goalkeeper, is now going to get a chance to send it to his team. 11 goals against the whole season with a 1.32 goals against average. 38 saves and a about a 78% save percentage. So decent numbers for Wheelwright. He's not simple to put it past. Come the Lopes down the far side and a nice ball. I like how they are attacking early, really sending it over the top of the defenders. Well, if there's anyone you're gonna to wanna to get the ball to, it's Nikki Jackson. He had an opportunity on that rebound early on, but kicked it directly into the legs of the Wolverines box defense. and. You're going to want to get Nikki Jackson going as quickly as possible. Of course, that was Jackson Jello with the ball on the far right side. But regardless, you want to find, give Nikki some opportunities to, to score. 
And Jackson, the leader in the team, and shots and goals. Eight goals, three assists, 36 shots, 22 of those on Cage. So he's a threat every time he gets the ball, whether it be to his head or on his feet. Thrown in here, and Jackson chases, but it's back to Wheelwright. Nice night out in Phoenix. Starting to come down to a little bit better weather. Say so winter's general. definitely coming in. Oh, definitely. Just in time for Halloween on Tuesday night. Yes. And a throw in for GCU on the far side. Jackson worked on it, hit one of the lopes in the back. It was Charlie Keating and now Jackson's out of the scrum with it. Goes into through ball. Got to step on his man into the box. But the ball intended for Josh Drack is off the foot of a Utah Valley defender. And they will try and regroup and get it up. I got to say that was a great job by Nicky Jackson. He fell to the ground, still stayed with his feet, kept with the ball, and almost found Jackson Jello on the right side. Oh, good defensive pressure. It seems like maybe putting a little bit more pressure on early. I feel like maybe we don't always see GCU doing this in the, the opponent's zone. Out of bounds. And Utah Valley retains possession. Playing in the middle of the field and slipping is Guy Lamy. Lamy, three goals, two assists. He'll be a man to watch for Utah Valley. Is this one sent to the box? On the tail end of that. It goes in Peyton Carson across far side to near Pollard couldn't even get close to it and it's a goal beautiful pass perfectly placed and just an easy header that just rolls right past the diving Jeremy Pollard like we said Jeremy's gonna have to be on the top of his game four minutes into this game and you Utah Valley's already scored. Uh, I'm not quite sure what to say. It seemed like that ball was kind of lobbed there. Pollard may have seemed to be on his heels. And what about the defense there from Sasanbarovic? I feel like, you know, not to knock him or anything, but you, you get a chance, you maybe want to go up and get that out of there. I didn't see him necessarily go up for it. Well, he might have just maybe missed the jump or, or uh, you know, maybe Peyton got it just a little bit above him, but not too much of a knock on Sasanbarovic. Just... Missed opportunity on defense to get a stop, but if this is the only goal that the Lopes give up for Utah Valley, then no harm done. But they've got to also get on the board quick. Like we said, GCU went up 2-0 in 2015 when Utah Valley visited and still lost, so the first goal, first couple goals maybe don't matter, but huge goal right there. Peyton Carson, great job getting in position ball perfectly off his head into the top left corner really and now a free kick coming from Drack maybe to find the head of a teammate here good ball you get the sense that we may have a lot of offense early a lot of shots and the goalkeepers are gonna need to stay in this whole game no lapses mentally Wayne working on the defender that is Jaden Wagoner who kicks it out of bounds in for a low throw in. Jella deferring to a teammate, Brandon Johnson. Johnson doesn't get starts all the time, but here he is tonight looking to make a difference. Into the box, and that one kicked out by the defender didn't really see where that one went at first thought maybe wheelwright had it gcu offense had a chance there but either way cleared out by the wolverines well it seems like the lopes are finding options you get the throw in from johnson and just a little bit wrapped up is aiden mclaughlin and then on the rebound it looks like charlie keaton just couldn't find space to punch that one in so the opportunities are there it's just execution now for the lopes it's good to see that GCU's already getting these opportunities very early. Some speed down the far side. And now to the middle, a nice pass off. 27 Diego Serna on the ball. He'll send it into the box, but a nice job of Sasperich clearing there. Redemption on that one. Finds Paul Hoffmeister. Hoffmeister 
one of the stars on this Utah Valley team, a man that GCU must shut down tonight. Five goals on the season for Hoffmeister. And yeah, the Wolves are definitely going to want to make sure that they keep him quiet all night, but it seems like they're also going to have to watch out for Peyton Carson as he's the uh, lone scorer so far tonight. Sent down, GCU off the head, and then Utah Valley will not get possession. Good job, GCU, winning the scrap in the middle of the field. And now we'll see their counterattack. Johnson on the ball, looking for a teammate. Finds Say. Now GCU slowing it down just a little bit here after runs at first. Now Jackson, top of the box, he's always dangerous and a save made by a wheelwright. Exactly what we talked about, getting the ball to Jackson, they did. Uh, well, good opportunity for, for Nikki Jackson, but a very solid save by U Utah Valley. And not really that difficult of a ball to stop. It just kind of got off the side of Nikki's foot, might have clipped his defender in front of him, but a little rolling dive, no problem for Utah Valley. Like I said, the opportunities are there, they just gotta execute a little better. Into the middle of the field, now sent out wide and almost keeping it in was Drack, but not able to. A little too far ahead of Josh Drack. Now a throw in for Utah Valley. Well, for Carson Payton, only his second goal on the season, two assists, but he leads the team with 31 shots. So he gets the production, just not necessarily always the execution. It's ball played back by Pollard. And McLaughlin and company work up with it again. Sent out of bounds again, intended for Drack. And the Wolverines get a throw in on the near side. Carson lost that ball by Sasevarevich. That's going to be the markup tonight. Sasevarevich on Carson Payton. And this ball's down the side into the corner and out. So maybe a chance there for a corner lost. A little too far ahead of Charlie Keating. He tried to slow down the ball with his left foot, but instead it goes directly out of bounds. A throw in from the very corner for Utah Valley. See what they can do from this. GCU plays it right defensively. They can get a shot. Now in the corner, Hadim Say guarded tightly by Connor Salmon and he'll get it back to McLaughlin as the GCU back ranks will move up the field. Sasevarevich. Into the box, Drack, nice job keeping that one in front of him. He dribbles into the box, sends it to the cross and it's gotten by Wheelwright, almost slipped out of his hands. Could have been a rebound there for Jackson, but not so. Great job of Joseph Wheelwright to keep his hands on that one. Josh Drack on the rebound, finding some space, but Wheelwright just able to hold on to it. Jose Wheelwright. <laughs> Demos, middle of the field, and Utah Valley is able to win that one. Say. Dumps it on back. Well, we've seen three shots for the Lopes so far. One for Utah Valley. Not really sure if that last one was a shot or a cross sent it to a teammate, but. Throw it now for GCU. Jackson pushed down. Ball up, great steal by McLaughlin. Keating now with it up to Sasevarevich. See if he can uh, re redeem himself maybe with an offensive point and get GC right back into the score column after that early goal really in the uh, Fourth minute, 
for the Wolverines. 3-0 all time against the Lopes. Trying to work that quick pass through ball play. But Utah Valley shutting that down. And here they are again with Hoffmeister. Middle of the field, nice job finding Lamy. And McLaughlin denies that one, so an eminent attempt for Utah Valley shut down. GCU doing a good job. But Utah Valley retains possession. This is Wagoner. Wagoner giving credit for the assist. And he will lose the ball, and GCU will get a throw in on the far side. Looking for Jackson off the toss. But Utah Valley has it in the middle of the field. They'll pass it to Carson. Peyton. Weaves on two, and now in the corner, GCU will win possession. Sasevarovic did a good job trapping that. Exactly. Fantastic on-ball defense by Amir Sasevarovic. But now the Lopes just got to get a pass midfield. The lone goal scorer looking for a teammate finds one. And then at the top of the box, an opportunity is cleared out by Charlie Keating. That was another chance that could have been an attempt. Utah Valley looking good here early. Have some offensive rhythm. Now, like I said, last game, Utah Valley six shots and three goals on only six shots. So they're able to do a whole lot on minimal opportunities in the box. So far, they've only got one shot and one goal, but the Lopes, on the other hand, three shots and no goals. So it's just gonna be about opportunities, and the Lopes are gonna need to make sure that they create some because they could find themselves in a deeper hole than they are right now if the defense doesn't stay strong. Yeah, and you know, valid point. They're gonna need to see Pollard really work his best too. Only one shot so far, so not indicative of how he has played. It was a good shot, credit to Utah Valley. Maybe one the Lopes would have liked to see saved. Either way, one nothing here as we're coming up on minute number 15. And this one sent all the way in. Good job of GCU backtracking and stopping that one. But then Salmon has it, a sliding tackle, a hard sliding tackle at that. Well, they'll get the call this time for GCU. Obvious foul. Definitely obvious. It seems like a couple times before that was not called, this time it was. And rather inconsistent game Friday night called by the referee. Well, you know, it seems like we talk about it almost every broadcast that there is a level of um, aggression you can have in soccer as opposed to other sports. Nikki Jackson with a shot off the foot of the defenders. Now Keating, good job heading that one to Drac. Let's see what GCU can do here. There's a, there's a level of aggression, you know, with the hand checks and a lot of pushing and stuff that you don't see in a whole lot of other sports, I guess the opposite of football, which is more of a... Uh, more obvious contact sport, but that's what I really love about soccer is the You get to be a little more hands-on defensively as opposed to like in basketball where if you breathe on the guy the wrong way It's a foul oh. <laughs> Don't even Starting with basketball <laughs> there. I mean look I love basketball. Yep. I love basketball But it has definitely been just a, a tad bit watered down and That's something that soccer's actually Ooh. tried to get away from lately as that's a tough foul not a foul really but just a, a little bit of a hip to the shoulder not not at all what the Lopes need from Justin Day obviously he was just going for the ball but it seems like yeah he got him pretty good so player down on the pitch get the best gear to show up your Lope pride go to lopeshop.gcu.edu to find everything GCU from the newest apparel to the coolest accessories Use promo code SPORTS25 to get 25% off for being a GCU TV viewer. Let's paint the valley purple. 
25% off. That's what I'm talking about. Get a lot of this nice Lopes gear. We're currently wearing some polos from the uh, Lopes shop. Columbia brand. Columbia brand. I'm, I'm rocking the Russell myself. <laughs> <laughs> the luck of the draw for both of us. Well, it's good to see getting off on your own on your own power. Just a, a little bit too high. You know, Austin Day going for that ball. Accidents obviously do happen in any sport. I believe that's she Wagoner coming off the man who a beautiful assist early I was on. Yeah, say had the assist on that beautiful ball. We'll see how much of an effect that has. It's just nice to see Wagoner walking off on his own power. He he will more than likely probably come back into this game. Let's see who the substitution is. Looks like it's going to be Nick Hargendiggy on for the Wolverines. Long hair, ready to go and take the spot of the man who had the lone assist. Great ball, so big shoes to fill, and this one sent deep in, and we're underway again. So who's got the better hair, Hargan Diggy or Josh Drack? Honestly, I have to give it to Hargan Diggy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the shorts too. I, I, I do like soccer players when they have the high shorts, as opposed to, you know, the lower shorts. Got to let John a Stockton of a look. Yeah, a little bit more of a retro look. Yeah, All there right. you go. But uh, Badley's got pretty. Chandler Badley's got pretty nice hair too. Some nice flow. It's Drac. This one a bit low. Headed on forward. But a couple men. Ooh. Oh, that one sent on. Drac really put all he had behind that one, but it missed. Well, we always talk about following your shot in basketball. And Josh Drac did exactly that following his free kick. Just way too far right off his foot. But a good, another opportunity for GCU as Drac comes charging in. He had a good look, a clean hit, but just a little bit too far to the right. A good job of uh, Jella getting out of the way, noticing that Drac was coming on to take that shot. Otherwise it may have hit him or he'd gotten in the way. And Utah Valley with the ball, foul called. So GCU is going to get the free kick. See what they can make of this. Trying to get the equalizer. Sasevera to kick back to Pollard. And he will survey the field from there. Right back to McLaughlin. As the Lopes offense looks to work it up. No real threatening attempts other than that first one. Nice job of Drack getting over the defender there. And it lands to the foot of Jackson. But he loses the ball from the defender, well, Diego Cerner, taking that one away. Good job. Yeah, fantastic defense by Utah Valley in the box. Nikki Jackson had a lot of space until a great crashing defense to block up the middle and reduce what could have looked like a Nikki Jackson goal. Well, whenever he gets the ball, it's really a threat and an opportunity right in the top of the box, even more so. It seems like early on, there's a counterattack strategy from Utah Valley to send it deep down the field and try and catch the back lines of GCU sleeping, but it hasn't worked so far. Jella trying to move in on a defender, and that one's off the foot, so a throw in. Like the runs they're taking to the outside, but nothing doing yet. Well, they're being aggressive, but they're just having a, a tough time against this defense for Utah Valley, who has really kept them very quiet. So far, the Lopes on shots have had five. So, like, I mean, I discussed creating opportunities for GCU, and they have been creating opportunities, but I, I guess I failed to mention how good Utah Valley's defense is. Well, the defense better than the offense is only averaging about 1.13 goals a game for Utah Valley, 18 goals on the season compared to GCU's 25. 
only generating 172 shots. GCU 36, 236. This one's stolen here. And now Guy Lamy had a chance, not one stolen. Great job defensively by GCU and Sasevarevich. Again, it's Amir Sasevarevich, fantastic on-ball defense. Just kicked a little too far out in front of GCU, and he's able to recover, and he's able to keep away Guy Lamy from getting a wide-open goal. Yeah, that was a dangerous chance. And now he looks for a man, but another jo nice job of Day getting ahead on it and saving the day. No pun intended there. Didn't mean to do that. I appreciated it. I realized it about two seconds after I said it. <laughs> I'll put the ball, and Drac has the steal in the middle circle. Demos all the way down to Jella, but Jella's ball finds it stolen again. Harden Diggy coming on and doing his job. Very nice crowd on hand for a Sunday night matchup. Everyone wanting to get out and see the last two games here at GCU Stadium for the men's team. Women's team obviously on their way to the WAC tournament. Yeah, it's a very, very exciting time for GCU, and it'd be really nice to see the men's join them, join the women's in their first year of Division I eligibility. And the women's played a fantastic game against CSU Bakersfield. Now a run here for Peyton, and it's snuffed out again by the defense. GCU shutting it down, and now looking for a counterattack of their own. Demos hounded by Vasquez, and it'll be out for a throw in. Sasverich comes running up to take it. Drac, nice play, keeping his feet, getting it back to Sasverich. And the Lopes, right about on target for their average. Shots per game, 14.8. They're at five right now, but good job of holding the opposition to well under their average of 10.8 shots a game, and only one right now for the Wolverines. Well, unfortunately, that one shot is currently the sole goal they currently have right now, but either way, GCU's defense has been solid ever since, so we're in for a very, very close game. Well, you talked about the UNLV game, about they scored three goals off the six shots, and that was something to keep in mind. So we see a foul towards the box on Morris. Want to gain experience as a sports broadcaster? Apply to work at GCU TV and get the opportunity to broadcast Division I college sports. Contact Career Services for more information. Hey, we're currently doing that. Yes, we are. Good to do this. It's fun. GCU continuing to give opportunities where we have a, a great opportunity here at GCU TV. We're watching it unfold right in front of our very own eyes. Yes, constantly growing, constantly looking for new talent to expand our already amazing staff. Foul there on Keating and explanation wanted there by number eight, Guy Lamy. Don't think he's going to get a booking, just a warning. Thirty-one yellow cards for this Utah Valley team. A bit high on the season. They are definitely aggressive. This one sent in. Jackson jockeying for position on his man. Can't quite get it. No foul on that call. Very, very interesting. Yep. Well, what about this one? There we go. That was what a little about more this obvious. One? I, the ball, and there's some discrepancy here. Let's check this out again. Aaron Caprio, and then I'm not sure why the teammate sent it into the goal after of Utah Valley, but I thought maybe that was going to be a penalty kick, but I guess it was outside the box. Well, either way, it's a scoring opportunity for GCU, so they just got to be able to execute it. Yeah, they'll take it. But it was it. very obvious that Nikki Jackson was pushed down on that one, and he might have been pulled a bit the play before. 
I saw that too. Definitely saw, agree with that. Wondering why there was no call, but nonetheless, ja Jella is going to get an opportunity from one foot outside the box. He's going to let it off. And that one taken by Drac misses just barely to the left. Well, it seems like the Lopes wanted to get the cross in the box going, but Josh Drac just kicks it a little bit too forcibly and is unable to connect with the teammate. But a very, again, it's a very good look for Josh Drac at the goal. Into the 26th minute here. Still nothing for GCU, but six shots as they continue to pile up seven Utah Valley fouls. Austin Day on the ball, and he will win possession for GCU. And now something in the middle of the field. Nice pass out to Drac. Good job distributing that ball. And this shot just floating above the crossbar and to the left again. So Josh Drac, his third opportunity at the goal. He's just unable to execute a beautiful look and a nice pass to the crossing Drac. And unfortunately just curves the wrong way past the crossbar. And again, the opportunities are there for GCU, but the execution has still been very tough. Something that was talked about at the top of the broadcast was the execution shot generation wasn't really so much the concern as much as it was finishing for gcu and it's come into fruition here as they have not been able to do so down one nil middle of the field hadim say out with the ball and he will send it all the way down and wheelwright comes sliding in gets possession of the ball and will send it down a little bit dangerous there for uvu but a nice play by their goalie jackson jella showing off the speed has been all night just hasn't been able to get by his defender strack has in the middle field will he get another shot attempt passes it down to sasevarovic now he'll get a chance this one blocked and Sasevarovic still on it Amir looking to make something happen down the left side Drac looking to get open for him can't do it and that ball come came away by UVU as Carson made a nice play here's Demos nice job getting out to Jella just outside the box on the right sends it in header scores Nikki Jackson that's one one Lopes great setup pass by Jackson Jella and Nikki Jackson with the header Jella had all the time in the world to set up this beautiful pass and he gets it to the perfect guy Nikki Jackson a beautiful header and we're tied well let's go back <laughs> to your keys of the game and what was one of them I think getting the ball to Nikki Jackson definitely getting the ball to Nikki Jackson you see exactly why they should a gorgeous header and now the Lopes are right back in it well, you hear that is a clear foul. You hear the frustration from Utah Valley. Yeah, you got our, our, our little uh, our game, our field mic, and that's the head coach yelling at the referee saying they cost him a goal. Did not like one call. I'm not sure quite what the call was. Uh, it might like. have been maybe some contact down in the on the left hand side with Carson Payton. He got pushed. Amir Sasevarovic was there who ended up setting up the great oh. sa great, great save uh, by Paul. I mean, that's we, a must have. Yeah. You must have that one, but I don't know. I was was not expecting that one to go on net there. Anyway, uh, Amir Sasevarovic who ended up setting up the pass for Jackson Jella um, might have gotten a little bit tangled up with uh, Carson Payton. And uh, well, it's a cost of a goal. I would say not the foul would be the issue. I would say uh, working on your defense in the box should be maybe your number one priority and making sure that Nikki Jackson doesn't get an opportunity. But you know, he, however he feels. Still arguing. I mean, he's still arguing his call. He really does feel strongly about that. You give credit. I mean, the ball to Jackson was absolutely perfect. Couldn't have been any better. It's the ninth shot from GCU. So. I mean, it, it, it only in due time, and they finally were able to score. Well, I, I, you can understand the frustration because you see a guy get you, – you you have your eyes. You have your opinion on what that, that call might have been or what it actually was. We see it all the time in every single sport. But 
This time it goes the way of the Lopes. They get a great goal off Nikki Jackson's header, but my focus would be focusing on keeping the defense strong in the box where it matters, not a iffy call uh, down on the left side. Well, and GCU's had a couple of those as well that may have cost an opportunity for a shot here, but we've seen a thrilling game, just what we knew would happen, and here's a chance, and a pass just missed, and now into the box again, still on the ball, and it's cleared out there. That was Keating, and man, GCU is really riding the momentum right now. Keating had a chance in the box again to follow up no more than a minute later, but not quite able to do it. Utah Valley clamping down there, now this one sets into the box and Wheelwright goes above everyone and grabs that one to safety. Very easy save for Wheelwright on that one. But you had Demos there just in case. Just in case he got through his hands. Drack on to play that one. And Demos heads it out of bounds. Uh, for 27. Your best round of golf away to the GCU golf course. Experience beautiful green, state-of-the-art amenities, and the redesigned restaurant and clubhouse. Book your tee times today at gcugolf.com. As Will Wright will grab the ball again. Nikki Jackson with another opportunity. Just gets the side of his foot. Not a very strong hit, but I talked about it, and I'll keep talking about it. They're giving themselves opportunities, but unable to execute, of course, minus the goal by Nikki Jackson of the questionable foul play. I'm using air quotes, of course, but you, GCU has, has got the opportunities. They just got to make sure that they continue to execute and continue to put more pressure on the defense, keeping the ball on their side. And eventually, it's it's going to happen. It happened early on. Nikki finally broke through, got a goal. They keep staying aggressive defensively, keep staying aggressive offensively. The goals are going to come. And they're giving themselves a lot of opportunities against a, a really, really good Utah Valley team. Well, this has been a nice-looking Utah Valley team so far, but GCU has looked better than we've seen them in a while. And this ball, that's definitely a foul coming. And maybe a booking there. Flagrant trip. Still some frustration for the head coach of Utah Valley. Head coach Greg Moss. And sent in again by Drack. A backwards header, and that one just missed. Actually, a save by Wheelwright. A nice job punching the hand up there. That save was incredible. Beautiful backwards header, though. If we get a second look at it, Charlie Keating, that would have been play of the year, I think. A backwards header, it looked fantastic. But of course, Wheelwright's got to be there to, to take away the opportunity for GCU. But fantastic pass. And Alex, we could have looked at play of the year right there from Charlie Keating. I, I, that must take incredible determination and focus. And in front, a chance with that. And then Jella just will miss hit this one. And it floats way over the netting. Well, to the beginning of Lopes Way, honestly. Might have been just a rushed kick for Jackson Jella. He had a lot of space in the middle for an open look at the goal, but unfortunately, another missed opportunity, but still loving the aggression with GCU there, getting as many shots on possible, 11 so far, three of them on goal. And the defense is still staying strong, so I'm liking what I'm seeing from GCU so far. And here's a through ball here, Utah Valley, a shot just off the crossbar. And that was Peyton again. Beautiful shot by Peyton, but of course the and now Peyton is going to have another chance, and he will be stuffed, Pollard. Jeremy Pollard, what a beautiful save. Just gets the foot out in front of the ball. Dead to rights, honestly. Wow. 
but down and out, able to make the save and keep it at a draw so far. It seems like he lucks out with the first opportunity from Utah Valley off the crossbar, and then this one, a great last second kick. Into the box, and a nice job of GCU getting it out, and they will stave off the attack. And I talked about Jeremy Pollard coming up clutch, and you see it right here. Peyton had a beautiful opportunity. It bounced off the crossbar. May have hit off his hand first. Possibly off his hand, and then the second opportunity, Pollard just barely kicks that one out of the way. And I said Jeremy's going to have to be solid, and he has been fantastic tonight. Minus, of course, the one goal allowed. And, you know, and his credit again, a good, sh good oh, shot. It was a beautiful shot. Great placement. This one sent in hard from Salmon, but no problem there for Pollard. 35th minute. Just about 10 to go here in this first half as Jackson taken down maybe from Giovanni Vasquez and limping. Let's hope that he just cramped up or something. It looked a little aggressive, but maybe not purposeful. Yeah, he's just gonna try to walk it off a little bit. He I, looks like he'll be okay. And now here's Wagner. Wagner down the side. Remember, had that first beautiful ball, and this one no good. And only one teammate on the receiving end of that was Hoffmeister. So didn't really have any men in the box, and substitutions will come on. Damian Herman will check on, and Demos will come off. Herman. Big score for this GCU team. Yeah, Damian Herman, a big time score for GCU, and it seems like the Lopes are gonna need to rely on him a lot coming off the bench, giving them more opportunities and another score down in the box. There's Badly, Badly working on Drac. Guarded tightly and nice little ball, but not to a teammate. Would have been a nice move but a teammate was not there. That was Frischnecht, Blake Frischnecht, who came on on the substitution. Also, Zach Moss, head coach's son. And now here in the middle of the field, Nikki Jackson, get it out to Herman. Herman in the top corner of the box. He'll sweep to the right, bring it back to his left. And a little too much there for Herman. I would have liked to see him shoot it a couple seconds earlier. Well, a beautiful move by da Damian Herman. He had Nikki Jackson at the top in the middle, but unfortunately, I just maybe a little bit overthinking on that one. Say, Say he's gonna send this one in, and this one challenging the keeper wheel right, but missing by a couple feet to the right. Well, a beautiful shot by Say, just right on the line. Unfortunately, a little bit too far right, but. A great look again for GCU. Yeah, this Havoc squad, louder than they have been all night. They can feel the pressure coming from GCU. See the shots, all 12 of them. Hoping to take the lead before this half concludes. All three Utah Valley chances have been incredibly dangerous. One a goal, one bailed out by the iron, and the other bailed out by Pollard. Oh, flying over the back of Jackson. No foul. Actually, yes, a foul. Here it is. Well, it looks like uh, Aaron Caprio is just going over him. Going a little bit too high to get that one as he sails right over Nikki Jackson, but again, another foul for Utah Valley. Evan Waldrop looks to check on. Also, Zach Moss also checking on again for Utah Valley. It'll be after this free Tell kick. For about 10 yards inside the midfield line, Josh Drack to take it. 
get stuck in on that first half. Drax sends this one in nicely done. And this one booted high and out of bounds. Day really wanting to get that one out of there. Well, he did a good job of getting that one out of there. <laughs> Still clearly out of bounds. For a second, may have been over one of the light fixtures. <laughs> Keating comes off, Waldrop comes on. It's the nice Creighton man, as we refer to him as. Yes, sir. Fortieth minute, GCU. Even here, but all the momentum in their favor so far. Keep the legs going for the second half. in by Utah Valley. Played up, say on the ball, and flying in came Hoffmeister, and he gets the ball for Utah Valley. Nice job, nice play. Here he is on the near side right in front of us, guarded by two GCU men. And then back to Jackson. Now we'll see what Jackson and company can do. Coming up the field in a hurry, played off the ball. And they're gonna throw it. Experience the Loaf Life through GCU TV's original series, Finding Tatum's Purpose. See GCU through the eyes of Tatum on her journey to graduation. Streaming now on GCU.tv and YouTube.com slash GCU. So if you're ever curious about what goes on here at GCU or what it's like to be a student, Finding Tatum's Purpose should give you a good amount of insight. Utah Valley sends this ball up. GCU has a lot of their men in the offensive zone. Hoping to get the ball back, and that looks like it's going to be a push and a foul, and it is. Just a little too aggressive there. Defense going to have to stay strong with about four minutes to go left in this first period. Fantastic job so far. Ever since they gave up that goal, GCU has been absolutely unstoppable, and it's led, of course, by Jeremy Pollard. Two great saves just a few minutes ago and they're gonna need all of them in the second period. Absolutely, and now this one's sent in there by UVU, and that's a great ball all the way to Pollard, but he is able to grab this one, and it looks like he is injured. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Pollard coming in to get that ball. Looking for the header, though, was... Grabbing his head, yeah. Looking for the header was Alex Felix. Yeah, it looks like Pollard might have gotten clocked somewhere. Hopefully he's okay. But just in case, Corey Marquise would take over at goalie. Six-foot freshman out of Mississippi. Oh, I'm sorry, out of Ontario. Well, it's never... A laughing matter with these head injuries. No, never. And always have to err on the side of caution and take the athlete's word. Yep, it looks like Pollard will be okay. So that's good. Fantastic for GCU. Jeremy Pollard, 63 saves on the season. So far, he's only had to be utilized once in save opportunities. So make it 64 on the season. But he is a not only a big addition to this team but just a big man in general 6-4 out of Australia the transfer from Akron sent in and speeding down as a Utah Valley player but a good job able to corral that ball Krishnek almost came in there on goal and had a chance to get that ball but Pollard said no yeah, Pollard again laying his body on the line. Another good save. Say in the center. Face-off circle. And now Herman gets this one down, but it's got too much on it. It was looking at eyes for Jella. About 
two and a half to go in the first half. And there's Frischneck again. He's into the box. Frischneck is going to get a shot and a save by Pollard again. Again, Jeremy Pollard coming up clutch as usual. Frischneck had a chance in the box earlier taken away by Pollard, but this time, no. Sasevarovic. And here in the final minute and about 45 seconds, Drac looking to send it in. They're going to get, is that a corner? It is going to be a corner here. Taken by Waldron. So maybe the final opportunity in the first half for GCU and a chance to go ahead. Here it is. Header way off the mark. It was a good, good job getting it into the box, but execution couldn't get in on goal. Well, looking for Nikki Jackson again, Mr. Clutch. Unfortunately, this header finds the left side, and you can see right there. It might have been actually uh, Herman slipped behind Jackson. And it, uh, you know, again, a, a good opportunity. GCU has had the opportunity to score. They have been doing a great job of keeping the aggression up. It looks like Nikki Jackson is coming off the field. Not entirely sure why. Oh, he is maybe checking bleeding. His, yeah, he's so checking. He's bleeding, yeah. yeah, he might have got maybe somebody's nail or something like that. But yeah, just getting a tape job. I don't think you're allowed to be on the field. No, no, it's uh, you definitely cannot be on the field <laughs> yeah, if you're bleeding. Right. <laughs> that's, a, that's a health hazard, yes. honestly, at that point. So. Sasevarovic looking to shut that ball down. 45 seconds to go. Sasevarovic almost pushed down by Hoffmeister. Shot there, whiffed on, and there's another shot blocked. Carson Payton was trying for his second to take the lead. Couldn't do it, and now GCU up with it. 30 ticks to go. Good job by Waldron to get in front of that one. But you know, equally, Utah Valley's had some good opportunities. Not as many shots, but a lot of clear looks at the goal. Jackson, top of the box. Nice job passing it off. Here's Drack, left-footed boot. Blocked by a Utah Valley defender. And it seems like that's gonna be it as they're rushing to do it, but five seconds to go. Thrown in and cleared out. That is going to be the first half. One to one in an extremely exciting first half. From GCU Stadium, we will be right back for the halftime show. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Cook, and you're watching GCU TV. Go Lopes. On the field. In the pool. On the court. We wear our game faces under the lights. But sometimes our toughest opponents aren't wearing a uniform. Instead, we confront them internally. Mental illness affects one in four adults in the United States. And suicide is the second leading cause of death among college students. If you or someone you know is fighting a silent battle, please speak up and ask for help. You are not alone. Grand Canyon University, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. Grand Canyon University offers over three decades of experienced leadership in real world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages fewer than 17 students with full-time faculty and student advisors who will help you share in a growing, vibrant Phoenix campus. Choose from over 100 relevant programs with a Christian worldview that integrates your faith with your education. 
GCU helps you achieve a successful future. Welcome to the family. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University online. Welcome back to GCU Stadium. And really, it doesn't show on the numbers, but a dominating first half performance by the Lopes. Yeah, GCU is doing a great job of creating opportunities for them. Six, 14 shots so far, three on goal. I talked about it early on that they really needed to get the goal scoring and get the opportunities and create the opportunities, and they are doing absolutely that. The defense has been strong, and hopefully it will carry into the second half. Well, and just like we talked about at the top of the broadcast, Pollard, even though that first goal got past him, really shutting it down against these Wolverines. Yeah, Jeremy Pollard was my player to watch, and for good reason. 63 saves on the season. He's got one, he's got two so far, and he has been absolutely fantastic, along with the rest of the Lopes defense. And, well, they're doing a good job so far of keeping Utah Valley off the board. Well, J.P. Saar had an opportunity to speak with senior Nikki Jackson about finishing strong in his final games in GCU Stadium. Hey, Lopes fans, J.P. Saar alongside Nikki Jackson. Nikki, just got done with practice. How you doing today? Good. I mean, it's feeling, I'm feeling good. It's, it's uh, some good weather out here. It was a good practice. So. Season's coming to a close. You have seven goals and three assists so far in the year. How can you guys finish the season strong and real push hard for a strong finish? I mean, it's always great ending the season at home. We have uh, three pretty tough games, but, I mean, it's better to be playing at home. We're, I think, 5-1 and one at home, so we're uh, notoriously good at playing at home. So I'm excited to be able to play these last three games in front of our fans and see what we can end up doing. Speaking of playing at home, you're approaching the final games of your GCU career. Is it starting to set in? Go through your emotions and your feelings coming through for these last final games. It's weird. Um, every, after every game, I'm like, oh gosh, five games left, four games, and now I'm down to three. It's crazy how fast the years go by, but I mean, I'm definitely taking every game as it's my last and just trying to enjoy it and take it in. How was your experience at GCU as just on the soccer team or just on the campus these last four years, seeing it grow, seeing the program expand? How has that been? Uh, it's crazy. Uh, going from a different coach to a whole another soccer stadium, the development of the school and the soccer program, it's been amazing. and I'm, I love it. Scored 38 goals in your GCU career. Do you have a favorite? Uh, top two. Uh, home opener for my freshman year, my first ever goal as a college player. And then last year for the inaugural uh, home opener in the stadium, the header was two of my favorite goals I've ever experienced. It was amazing. Well, thank you so much, Nikki, and good luck in your final three games. Enjoy them because you're never going to forget those. Okay, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Well, Nikki Jackson making an impact all four years. Homegrown Scottsdale, Arizona. Went to Cactus Shadows High School, and man, are we happy that he ended up staying in-state and going to Grand Canyon. Yeah, Nikki Jackson has been absolutely fantastic all four years, and unfortunately his time has to come to an end this year. But the Lopes have a lot to be excited about, and Nikki Jackson is one of the big reasons why we're in this position right now to possibly make the WAC tournament. And Jackson definitely looking to play his career professionally after GCU. But for now, let's take a look at the GCU Hotel Halftime Highlights. And, of course, we start with the first opportunity, the first goal for Utah Valley. A beautiful header by Carson Payton off an even better pass by Wagoner. And then Nikki Jackson getting an opportunity to track. And this ball just curves a little bit too much to the left. And the Lopes have had a, a several opportunities. But, of course, they finally get to execute a beautiful pass to Nikki Jackson on the header. And... We talk about Nicky Jackson, and he is an absolute impact every time he's out on the field. And then, of course, the possible play of the year, the backwards header by uh, Charlie Keaton, and then a great save by Jeremy Pollard. And this one, i got to say, is my favorite play I've seen from Jeremy Pollard so far. He has been so good, just barely gets the foot in there, and then we get another look at Nicky Jackson's header. So the opportunities have been there, Alex, but just the execution just hasn't really form every opportunity they're not going to score every time they get into the box but 14 shots three of them on goal i'm liking what i'm seeing so far well the lopes looking to keep what they were doing in the first half going into the second half and get this win paul coral caught up with senior goal from benny murphy about his consecutive impressive finishes and how he performs at such a high level Hi, I'm Paul Coro, Lopes Insider, here with GCU senior golfer Vinny Murphy. He's coming off back-to-back -back tournament victories. What's working in your game so well right now? I mean, honestly, everything's clicking right now, but I'm driving it well. My iron play has been great, and then we've been working a lot on our short game. 
a lot of leg putting, and it's been showing results lately. You went to Kansas City. You were the only under par golfer there for three rounds, and then you come back a week later, had one bogey over three rounds. Is it momentum at that point for you? Yeah. I mean, golf, it's all momentum. If you're feeling good, you're going to play good. And my confidence has just been sky high lately. I mean, a lot of credits thanks to the coaches and everything, but everything's just working real well right now. What was your offseason like as far as how you worked and how eager you were for the senior being it? Was your senior year and the NCAA tournament eligibility for the first time? Yeah, no, I mean, last year we had a great year. We won the WAC Conference Tournament, which was huge for our confidence and moving a step forward in this program. But this year, I mean, we've gotten off to a great start, and we just hope to keep things going, keep working hard each day, and the results will pay off. Yeah, you guys got a heck of a venue out there at GCU Golf Course. For everybody who hasn't seen it out there, how, how nice of a facility is that? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, I can't say enough about what GCU has provided for our program and just all the support that we have, and it's it's paying off. It's Vinny Murphy from Edwards, Washington. I'm Paul Coro for GCU. Well, GCU Golf currently seventh in the WAC. We'll be back in action at the Waves Challenge January 29th in Somi's, California. And let's toss to a break. We'll be right back for the halftime show after this. I am Laura Rosoya, and I am majoring in biology with an emphasis in pre-med at Grand Canyon University. The dorm life at GCU definitely helped me build relationships, and I've made great friends on this campus. The quality education here is great. You're testing your limits, but you're going beyond them. It all comes together. The sciences, the ethics, and just everything. It's a beautiful thing. Grand Canyon University. The quality of a private Christian education. The affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. In today's competitive market, the demand for specialized knowledge is ever growing. Take the next step in your career by earning your doctoral degree from the College of Doctoral Studies at Grand Canyon University. We offer advanced doctorate degrees from a Doctor of Business Administration to a Doctor of Education and online PhD programs. Learners apply their research, critical thinking, and analytical skills to solve real world problems in areas such as business, leadership, and psychology. Our dissertation process is embedded into conventional coursework to help you move quickly toward graduation with a supportive learning community to keep you engaged. Work closely with faculty to pursue your unique goals and enjoy a variety of convenient learning formats. Attend class on campus in the evening or pursue doctorate degrees online and benefit from a curriculum designed for working professionals by experts in their fields. Join our community of scholars as we strive to live differently in the world and make a significant impact in organizations, communities, and society, or churches, educational institutions, and corporations. Find out more at gcu.edu slash doctoral. GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light, so we can give our students the competitive edge they need to succeed. And now, GCU is leading in the areas of computer science and IT. 
we prepare students to meet the demands of the fastest growing industry through our innovative IT programs in our College of Science, Engineering, and Technology. Using the latest real-world tools and an adaptive curriculum, GCU gives students the education they need today to excel in their careers tomorrow. Join the most inventive concept in education right now and position yourself for a future in the expanding world of IT. GCU offers fast-track options with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, systems architecture, and business analytics. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. Welcome back, 1-1 one, one, Utah Valley and GCU. The big story though, GCU dominating first half of play, 14 shots, five for Nikki Jackson, five for Josh Drack, and the others scattered amongst the lobes, but man, this has really looked like an all Grand Canyon game, and it just seems like once they start executing, They'll take the lead and they'll win this thing. Well, I had talked about early on in the broadcast about creating opportunities and getting scoring, getting into scoring position, and GCU has done a great job of that. It's just executing on a few of the open shots. Drack had a couple. Uh, I believe Jackson Jella had a, had one or two, but either way, defense has been great. The Lopes are getting the opportunities they need. 14 shots so far, three of them on goal. The defense has been strong ever since letting up that one goal, and it's led by the anchor, Jeremy Pollard. And what I like really about what this team has been doing is the fact that they only have four fouls compared to Utah Valley's 10. And that's something that they've really struggled with fouling and giving extra possessions to the opposition, which then lead to opportunities and runs. But GCU doing a good job. All they really need to do is continue to play the brand of soccer they were playing and keep feeling good. And like their chances going into the second half. Well, if they can, can like you said, Alex, if they can continue to, to do what they did very well in the first half, which was get into the box, have strong defense, and Jeremy Pollard can stay perfectly fine as he's been doing, Lopes are going to walk away with a win because the, uh, the, goal, the goals will come if the opportunities are there. We saw it early on. They were having trouble scoring, a lot of missed shots. A lot of balls going off foots, a lot of balls curving away from the crossbars. But when they had it on the right side with Jackson Jella, and he set up Nikki Jackson perfect, it came. The opportunity was there, and the execution happened. So it's going to happen, Alex. I hope it happens a little more often so that we can get a real good jump on Utah Valley, who currently sits six in the WAC standings, in the WAC tournament standings, I should say. They can get a good jump on them late because Utah Valley is used to not having a whole lot of shots. You know, like I said, the last game for Utah Valley against UNLV, they had three goals on only six shots. That means that six of those shots were not goals, but the other three definitely were. So they're used to working with the minimal opportunities on goal, whereas GCU, 15 last game, they've already got, they're about one more to their entire game match against Seattle U. They've got 14. So GCU setting themselves up. Utah Valley is kind of probably in a good spot right now where they're at. So defense has got to stay strong. Jeremy Pollard right there. You see him on screen. I have those exact same cleats, with, which I think is awesome. And uh, <laughs> I know it's a little bit of a side note kind of it thing. It is definitely a side note, but it's I, I appreciated hearing that. Uh, so it seems like uh, Jeremy and I have the same taste in cleats, which is nice. Jeremy, I, I appreciate the style. But anyway, uh, well, hopefully, do you? I mean, do you play as good as Jeremy in those oh, cleats? Oh, I do not. Jeremy is a much, much better soccer so player it's than not I am. The cleats. Okay, well, well, they look better on him for sure. A little like Mike story going on. <laughs> but anyway, if Jeremy Pollard can stay strong and continue to be a great goalie and and minute minimize the shots on the shot on goal opportunities for Utah Valley, you know, the Lopes could walk away with a win. Well, here we are underway here in the second half and upwards is Nikki Jackson and now he's got some room in the middle of the field nice job passing it out for maybe he had a lane and a shot taken it's off the crossbar starting off and this one just goes wide as well early oh. opportunities for GCU Charlie Keating and blasting one off the iron 
Well, you see right there, Charlie Keening, a beautiful look just right off the side of the crossbar. And like I said, Alex, the opportunities are there. Just got to get the execution down. It's getting closer and closer, though, because that one just hitting the top 90 left and the crossbar and now into the box a nice punch and again he'll try punching and the keeper goes down and they're going to get a goal kick now opportunity on an open goal as wheelwright came away from the goal but an unfortunate foul and another missed opportunity well now in is Carson Payton. He'll send, get this one into Lamie. Lamie sends this one off a defender's foot, and so Utah Valley will get men ready for a corner. Defense got to continue to stay strong for GCU. Take it here is going to be Salmon. And a nice job getting the head on it, but Pollard stops it. Just on the goal line, making the stop, and again, headed on, and this one misses. So able to stave off the attack thanks to a save from Jeremy Pollard. Like I said, Jeremy Pollard got to continue to stay strong, and it seems like he's going to do just that. With a little help from his teammates, it looked like Charlie Keating was down in the box, giving him some backup, and we'll get a second look at it. A very nice corner kick, but again, if Charlie Keating right there, looks like Austin Day was there on the backup. Almost diving into yeah. the post. But against strong defense for GCU, minimizing the the goal opportunities for Utah Valley. High arcing throw in here. And now GCU comes away with it in the middle of the field. Driving in, he'll dump this one off. Now into the corner. Gets it back to Lamy. Nice job tightly guarding the Wolverines by the lope so far in the second half. And there's a tight battle right there. And a ball sent for the corner. But an errant pass will give the G possession to the GCU Lopes. Good on-ball defense by Brandon Johnson. Taking advantage of the playing time he has given tonight. The freshman out of Tempe getting an opportunity to play in this one. And, man, he's doing a pretty good job so far. Liking what I'm seeing from Brandon Johnson. Maybe we'll see him a little bit more this season, or the rest of this season. It's very, very, unfortunately, s slowly dwindling away season. Just a few more games left on the uh, schedule before WAC tournament play. Good thing at GCU though, one one sport winding down means another one firing up. Basketball season. And I was gonna say, in this case, yes. basketball season. Utah Valley sending this one in, kind of pinball game of pinball right now. And we have a foul in the middle of the field. Looks like that one's going to be on Alec Feliz, number five. And a quick restart there for GCU. Like where their mind's at going right after him. Angela is going to push his man to the ground. Going for Utah Valley. Good to hear the Havocs staying rowdy. Just the start of the second half. And it seems like crowd is only getting bigger 
as the night goes on. This played there by the Utah Valley man, and now GCU will have a throw, and here's Austin Day. I think I see Thunder pouring some popcorn on the head of a fan. I saw him doing that earlier to the man down there in the Carson Wentz jersey. I uh, don't know why you'd hate on the jersey. Maybe uh, 33 points up today for the Eagles. Maybe Thunder's a 49ers fan. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. That, oh, that's funny. I should hope not. 49ers hey, and the Browns are basically synonymous. No offense. Well, to you know what's not synonymous? You making fun of my fandom here is the game on the <laughs> field. Ball out of bounds. GCU with the throw in. They'll bounce back. Maybe next season. <laughs> I don't. I was gonna say there's not enough time this year to even back. I'll, close I'll keep grasping onto my Joe Montana jersey. No matter how soaked in tears it is. <laughs> anyway. Played on the near side, and Utah Valley up with it, looking to spread the field, and a nice job of stopping the streaking defender. Feliz would have been off to the races if he would have gotten through there, but Day getting a nice slide tackle down. Yeah, great job by Day to slow down the momentum of Utah Valley. Was it Day or Johnson? I, oh, it might have been, actually. It might have been uh, Johnson. Was John, yes, you're right. Johnson you're right. holding something. I yes, thought. you're right. It is Johnson. Misspoke there. I it, was yeah, it happens. Different. You mix up seven and three. They look similar. But uh, Brandon, much bigger out there. Much bigger build. Bigger player than Day. Yeah, Johnson comes in at 5'10", 190, and Day comes in at 5'9", 145. So. 190 and 145. Those are the two weight totals. I was thinking about it, and there's a corner to the backside headed out by the Utah Valley defender. And now Morris, who's back in. I should say De uh, Morris Demos. Oh, and too much of a lead there for Hoffmeister. He had a run, and he had a man with him for help, but let it way too far in front of his feet, and GCU was able to steal that with ease. Beautifully placed pass, though, by Jackson Jello on the right side again. He has been doing a fantastic job of setting GCU up with these uh, header opportunities, but good box defense by Utah Valley to prevent a possible goal for GCU. Lothan. Salmon in the corner has a run on it and is able to get this to a teammate by keeping it on the ground gets through a couple legs of the GCU defense now let's see what the Lopes can do Jackson Middle of the field with speed. Oh. And he's taken down as a vicious slide tackle for Caprio. And you can hear a lot of these fans not happy about that call. And there's booing now. GCU Stadium erupting in boos. Here it is again. And uh, I don't do you know think? if he was going for the ball on that one. Well, I think knowing that it was Nikki Jackson. Nikki yeah. Jackson had a lot of space. Have to be a little quicker to make the call there. I mean, they're just trying to slow down the best player, knowing how dangerous he is. Still grasping his knee. Yeah, Caprio went in for a tackle, not a slide tackle. He went in to physically slow down Nikki Jackson as much as he could. A very, very questionable, maybe borderline missed call on, a, on Utah Valley. Is that one no intention to go for the ball? He was straight going for Nikki Jackson. Shellis walking over and having some words with the referees and a good job clearing that one out. And GCU, uh, but at this time they're gonna get a call. Oh, Demos not happy. Well, it's been too much here for Utah Valley with no calls. You can see the frustration boiling over for GCU and rightfully so. Taken down aggressively and it seems like rather flagrantly i mean could have been an accident i think hoffmeister said it was obviously he's going to but well, demo's still not happy about that one yeah either way tension's really starting to rise 
And Day sends this one in just at the top of the box. We'll see what happens now. Clear attempt is going to be unsuccessful for Utah Valley as GCU keeps the pressure on, steals it, and a shot tails way too far off, not even ending up in the box, and it'll be a goal kick. Well, good look by Charlie Keating, just a little bit too far to the right on that kick. You, you know, GCU has been able to form a lot of these opportunities in the box, but, you know, like I've said, just ball's getting a little bit too ahead of them or just kick to the wrong side, but a beautiful open look by Charlie Keating. The opportunities have been there, just the execution. 17 shots now. Only one second half foul so far for GCU. Seven for the Wolverines. And now Jella worked on aggressively by his defender. Looks like a throw in is going to come. Here comes Brandon Johnson running in to take this one. So it looks like a something just happened. Still trying to we're still trying to figure it out ourselves of what just what Johnson's, just happened. Johnson's gonna go in to the sip, uh, go get a sip of water from the uh, watering machine. Looks like Charlie Keating talking to the referee. Before the throw in, Johnson just ran over to the opposing sideline and got some of that water. I guess, hey, when you need to drink and get hydrated, you do. And this went into the box. Jackson gets a foot on it, but nowhere close to the net, and it's going to be a goal kick. the field Utah Valley with possession is going to send it all the way to the corner letting a teammate have a run on it and not going to be able to get to it as it's shut down by Drac I believe yeah great slide to slide by a uh, Drac to slow down the momentum of Utah Valley has the speed and now into the box One kicked out. Not sure exactly who it's on, but here it comes from Salmon. Oh, gets ahead to it and a good job. Of Paula getting his body square to that one, holding it tight, and GCU's got it. Uh, another great save by Jeremy Pollard. This one a lot easier than any other one he's had. It seems like it might have bounced off the side of uh, Jella coming in to save it, but again, Jeremy Pollard, probably the easiest save he's got all night. Jella now on the right side with a lot of space. Yeah, good defense by Utah Valley. Never miss a game. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and get notifications for all your Lopes action. Subscribe at youtube.com slash GCU, and that'll be necessary for the basketball season coming up. And the rest of the soccer season. Yeah, and every other sport. Really and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a whole lot of other really, really good stuff. So corner throw in for Johnson. Maybe he can get this one over the top of Utah Valley's defenders in the box. And nice job. It was pretty far in there, and a teammate was able to get ahead on it, but Peter's out. And as we start the 61st minute, a goal kick for Utah Valley.
Throw in here for GCU. This game's kind of reached a low point. Each team trying to figure each other out still in the second half. Trying to see what will happen off the adjustments made at halftime. Well, hopefully GCU can break through and get another goal on the on the board. But that's what happens when you have strong defensive games is the game just slows down itself. <laughs> Josh Drack. Not quite sure. Orchestrating what. his team. Comes the free kick. And it's off the wall. That's why you have the wall there. So it can't reach the teammates. And that's exactly what happened. Into the clutches of Pollard. it up for Utah Valley finding a teammate Lemie and that's going to be possession to GCU not exactly for what well no I guess a free kick maybe a free kick for Utah Valley well, not sure why but nonetheless that's what we've got Back to Caprio. And he will send a searching ball in. The head of a teammate, and that's not going to be able to land to number 16, Frischnecht. Thought he was there in the right position, but not quite. Good job of McLaughlin getting that one back to Pollard. Defense staying strong for GCU in the box, exactly what they need. Now she's got to come with an offensive. Some sort of offensive drive here. Maybe we'll get something off this free kick. Hadim safe from just inside the midline. And he will go wide to track right to him and on the foot. That's a great kick. And here comes GCU. Now with Jackson Jella in the corner. He'll try and split the defenders with his speed, but can't do it there. And now Frischneck with all that speed is going to try and get position on the defender. Nice move. Top of the box. Pass this one off. Guy Lamy. Lamy a shot, and that one almost bent inside the right post. What a great shot. Guy Lamy almost breaking the tie here. A beautiful looking ball. I thought it was going to curve in. He gets an opportunity in the middle. Oh my gosh. Oh, so close. Beating Say. It's beautiful. But thankfully it goes the way GCU wanted it to, which was completely out of the out of the goal. Almost. But now GCU is gonna get their chance. Keating into the corner here. Jella. Now he gets around a defender. And here's Jella sends it in. And it's off. Oh. Not sure if that was off the referee at all, maybe, but either way, Utah Valley's going to come up with it, and they have numbers and speed. I think GCU was looking for maybe a handball on that one. Sent in, and Pollard's there in a weak shot. Carson Payton. Another great save for Jeremy Pollard. That makes five so far this game. Go, get it, get it. 68 so far on the season. He's been huge for this team. Just 
just about to head into the 67th minute. Still even at ones. still hear the frustration from Ha, from Moss on the side of Utah Valley. Blow your whistle. He wanted possibly a handball somewhere. And I think the referees are going to tell him to calm down. Yep. Join us for Praise and Worship Mondays on GCU TV during our, chap our live chapel services. There's a new speaker every week with a unique message for you to hear. Tune in Mondays at 11.15 a.m. on GCU.TV and YouTube.com slash GCU. That kick sent high into the air. And Utah Valley still with it. Splits three defenders now topside. Hoffmeister looking to make something happen again. Sends this one in, but a teammate cannot get to it. sent back down and into the Utah Valley defensive zone. Cleared out, nice job by Day getting a foot on it. Neither team has really been able to do too much in the last 10 to 12 minutes. Oh, Jill, a great step. Oh, obvious foul. Yeah, now we're going to definitely get a yellow card oh, yeah. for that, but will it be red? Probably not. Yeah, you got to get a second look at it. Yeah. There it is. And there's the yellow card given. And that's huge right there. Like we said, 31 so far, make it 32. And now with the aggression the Utah Valley's been playing with, and have to be careful because another yellow card for that man, and it will be. Yeah, that was Jordan Wagoner, and it seems like Jella had definitely had the step on the right side, and Jella's got such great speed. And Wagoner, the, really the only thing he could do to slow down Jella was pull him down. Waldrop gets ready to come back in the game for the Lopes. But it is a yellow card of the 66-29 mark. This one sent way too far. Headed up, though. I guess not too far as it found the back corner. Just missed a nice ball. Yeah, again, a great place ball by Josh Drack. And it just sails a little bit too far left. But Wheelwright is there to punch it out just to make sure that it doesn't get the top corner of the box. The opportunities have been there. It's just... Executing I, I'm very aware they're not going to score every time they they get into the box, but At least GCU is giving themselves the opportunity to score a lot of per greatly great place balls by Jella Drac It's it's been a lot of fun to watch but one at it at some point Alex they will score Jackson looking to be that man here's Demos, oh. nice play, just led a little too far. A lot of speed on that Utah Valley defense. Yeah, Demos had an opportunity there, just like you said, Alex kicked just a bit too far in front of him. It has been a very chippy game so far. It seemed like it looked like Nicky might have been pushed a bit when he was walking up to the box a couple seconds ago. Set for a throw in here from basically the corner, headed up, and now an attempt here. This one a shot, and he scores! He scores! And that is Josh Drack! And the Lopes have taken the lead, it's 2-1! Like I said, Alex, opportunities are gonna come, and finally the Lopes are able to break free and beat this tie. A great throw in by Johnson, and off the rebound of the header. Quick hitter. Right there, the quick Jordan hitter, one Slash. Touch. GCU now on top in the 69th minute. 
absolutely Wheel masterful right. job by Josh Drack. Wheel right goes left, and the ball goes right. Great job by Josh Drack. Drack. Third goal on the season, four assists, and more importantly, the Lopes have taken the lead. You just said it probably no more than five minutes ago. You keep getting the chances, and they're going to score, and here they have. 2-1. Josh Drack goal, assisted by Musa Morris Demos. Brandon Johnson to also be, on the assist as well. To be honest, I'd say you give that assist to uh, Utah Valley. It bounced off the defender in the box, and Drack was able to get the shot off. There's a shot, finds a teammate, and what you can't have right now is a lapse and let in a goal. Utah Valley top of the box. Defense needs to suffocate, and a good job clearing that one out, getting any danger away. So we're into the 70s. 71st minute here. 2-1. GCU would love to get a win here with only one more game left on the schedule. Currently in the standings, they are sitting at that eighth spot. Tied with uh, UTRV. U and hopefully, hopefully they can get it. Yeah, well, looking to overtake Texas Rio Grande Valley for that last spot. And now here's GCU again. Jella through two defenders, still has a step, and then tripped up in the box, but no call coming here. Tell the frustration yeah, of Jelly. He might have, and he may be hurt. Yeah, he might have got hurt on that one. Yeah. Oh, he's really down and writhing too. Hopefully Jello will be okay. Down on the field, grasping his hand, it looks like. Might have jammed it. You hope it's not a break? I never like to speculate on any injury for any athlete, but... We'll get a replay on it. Yeah, it looks like Jackson might have fell on his hand. And Jackson will be okay. He's walking off with his own power. He'll come off the field. Probably as a precaution. Hopefully we'll see Jackson later on in the rest of this game. But GCU going to have to do it without him. Well, Steelers overcame the Lions 2015 on Sunday Night Football. Game just ending. A throw in again here. We saw a goal last time from that position. Brandon Johnson not able to get the ball into the right spot there. And Utah Valley is unable to clear. Looks like Jackson Jell is staying in the game, though. Good to see. A necessary player and a game changer. Tripped up again. This is Frischnacht. Uh, he's gotten several times pushes, but no calls. And that is why the course of boos erupts again. It's been a very aggressive game. And I don't think it's going to stop. We'll get a second look at it. Jella clearly shoved by Frischnack. Oh, blocked by the one-man wall. It's a good job. And now Utah Valley's up and running with it. Drack chases, beaten by Peyton, and he's gonna get a shot that's blocked by Sasaverovic. And the last line of defense makes the stop. Good job. Whoa. 
Jella. And that one in directly in front of the referee, but no call. Yeah. Well, that one seemed like it may have not been a call. Yeah, I think Demos might have just tripped up just in general. A, a general trip up. <laughs> the generic trip. The very generic trip up. And there's not the not-so-generic trip up as yes. two men go colliding into each other. Sometimes you just lose track of where your feet are at, you know, you trip yourself up. No big deal. Generic trip up. Pollard getting going. Jella is able to win possession back for the Lopes. Nice job. Hustle play there. Ooh. Sent in. Demos trying to get behind his defender. And stays on the ground as a worm burner and is grabbed by Wheelwright. Again, just a, a nice opportunity by Josh Drack. And we'll get a foul on, on say or okay, no call. I, I, I heard a whistle. I, I honestly think there was a call, but then Utah Valley got it so got it going so fast off the restart. I mean, each of these teams have really been taking the ball and going right away off quick restarts yeah the one that was a foul they so they got it that fast Utah Valley just off and running 20 shots for GCU 12 for UVU but the big statistic is the score line that one reads two to one If you're visiting campus this, this fall, why not stay in the GCU Hotel, which features comfortable rooms, a resort-style pool, and the Canyon 49 Grill. It's the perfect place to stay when coming to GCU. Rooms start at $79 a night. Book a room today at gcuhotel.com. And now Utah Valley moving their team in to the offensive zone, and a nice little lead pass finds Peyton into the box on the left side but couldn't do anything and it's going to be a corner. Sasevarevich has been fantastic so far keeping the defense strong for GCU on the sort of man-on-man -man defensive opportunities and definitely want to keep Peyton off the board because he's already got one so far the only lone score for Utah Valley. Oh great headed out. Great job by Nikki Jackson. Selling out there and not a, disallowing a goal. That's a great job. And a substitution for Utah Valley. Looks like Nikki Jackson can do it all. Certainly a very well rounded player. It's hard and diggy back on. And now, wow, what a shot. Beautiful look. From Blake Freshnecht, but that one zooming over. The crossbar here it is again yeah just like you said Alex zooming right past the left side of that crossbar and another bullet dodge for GCU as the shot counter for Utah Valley goes up to 13 but it's kind of tough to score goals against Jeremy Pollard who minus one mistake has been very lights out so far mm -hmm. This one sent deep into the corner here for UVU. But GCU comes away with it. Sent in again, looking for Jackson, looking for that insurance goal. 
Jackson flying in for that one. And a foul coming. So it's gonna be a foul on Utah Valley and a free kick here for the Lopes. 20 yards, 15 yards outside the box. Opportunity here for GCU. Best two guys on a free kick right there, Jella and Drack. Giving the duties to Drack, but this one bouncing right into the hands of Wheelwright. Great dive. Nice slide by Josh Drack to get that one out of bounds. Seems like he's been everywhere defensively and has made massive impact for this Lopes defense. As we are into the 80th minute, this shot just going over the net. And so it'll be a goal kick. GC, you're gonna have to make sure they keep the defense very strong in a close game, and they're doing a good job of it so far. Maximizing their opportunities on defense and minimizing the opportunities for Utah Valley as well. Twenty-one shots for GCU. Six more than they got last game against Seattle University, so the aggression brought up to about 10 or 11 for this game. And well over their season average of shots per game. Just looking to keep the foot down on the pedal for the remaining nine and a half minutes. A little too far ahead of Jackson Jello there. Well, 21 shots for the Lopes, 14 for Utah Valley. The Lopes see themselves with five saves, Utah Valley with four. 17 fouls for the Wolverines and eight for the Lopes. Scoring came at the 419 mark by Utah Valley. It was Carson Payton, the assist from Alec Feliz, and then 27-31, it was GCU that responded, a header by Nikki Jackson, and then not too long ago, the 69-01 mark, Josh Drack found the back of the net, assisted by Jackson Jella, and here we are at two to one in the 82nd minute. GCU work in possession oh. and they've done a good job and Nikki Jackson down on the field and writhing in pain too. Ow. Get a second look at oh. oh my goodness. Oh he's still down on the field and Yeah, we're gonna see a card. Jackson is gonna get himself back up hopefully he does maybe just a stinger right there or a dead leg hopefully I mean he's getting himself back up didn't seem too concerned there on the sidelines so you see your star player go down there you figure 
and have all the trainers rushing onto the field, but nothing. Well, Jackson also didn't call them over, and, and no one else did as well. So there must have been some communication, had to have been some communication by teammate, teammates. Nikki Jackson probably just saying, yeah, I just got a little banged up, no big deal. I'm all right, as he is marching back out to the middle to get ready for this free kick. Second Utah Valley yellow card, the Aaron Caprio. And this early on, Caprio had that slide directly into Jackson. Extremely aggressive, 18 fouls. It's always good to be aggressive on defense. I mean, oh, Drack with an opportunity. Back up top, Demos. Demos with a shot and it's high and out of bounds. You want to keep the aggression on defense as strong as possible, but there is an, obviously an extent to what you can and can't do. I mean, you know, Dennis Robin made a career out of defense. And, uh, you know, we are seeing a lot of aggression, but I'm assuming none of it is intentional. Just a few iffy, shaky sort of incidences so far. And that's what happens when you get athletes out there all trying to compete to win. I mean, try your hardest and come, guys come flying in everywhere, but you do love to see it and there's a goal, but yeah, no, we're going to wave it off. Goaltender interference, I, you and I saw that. Yeah, it's start. pretty obvious. You can't one. run into the goalie, especially when he's got possession of the ball like no, that. No, you cannot. <laughs> I mean, otherwise, what, this would be hockey. <laughs> yes. So another beautifully placed ball, but yeah, just a, a little interference there by GCU, but a, a good ball there by Drack, and then Keating of there to I finish mean, it off. And unfortunately, it's not a goal, but still looked very, very nice. Everyone on the field in a white uniform knew that it wasn't a goal. You could see by the reaction, maybe Keating a little bit, but. I think Keating was just going off in case of the right. missed call. We have had a lot of missed calls so far. Another way, it's not like they thought they had scored and then they was called back. Well, you don't stop playing until the whistle's blown, so. Absolutely. <laughs> now, as we head into the 85th minute, here we are, just about. Nice job getting the header out, five and a half to go. Defense in the box against Dan Strong for GCU. And this one is gonna stay in. No, it's not. So a goal kick for GCU, and you better believe they're gonna slow it down. It's Damian Herman and Demos are going to make the slowest substitution we'll see all night. No, no rushes there at all. No, now it's gonna start to be keep away for GCU. Just make sure to stay strong defensively and then just wait for the opportunities to come and don't force anything. That's a foul. Obvious push. Angela, eh, you don't want to speculate that he's necessarily milking that, but it doesn't hurt, especially with the time running down like this. And we'll get a second look at it. Jella shoved a little bit from behind. It's... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. By the way, Jill is still down. He's starting to get up slowly. Clock has froze. Seems like there might have been a little bit of delay there between the uh, tackle and oh, the yellow, yellow card. card. Look at that. Maybe he was talking. Yeah, this is going to be Guy Lamy. So that's three yellow cards now. I think Guy Lamy might have been. John, he must yeah, have been saying something. He definitely had him been saying something about Jella to the referee or just in general and it seems like this game's really getting away from Utah Valley now. And now GCU's got to capitalize. <laughs> Fortunately they three yellows and no reds so not like it happened to two players or to one player and you have an ejection but still three players on the edge of their seat not being able. Good look by Herman. You're right. Just a little too far ahead to risk any fouls. So maybe you're gonna see the aggression go down a little bit by those three players with the yellows. We'll talk about opportunities and Herman there wide open. But yeah, they gotta take advantage of the over aggressive play of Utah Valley. It is still only one goal game though, of course, so switch in the blink of an eye but and in the corner 
corner. This one is going to be thrown in by Utah Valley, looking to make something happen, sweeping to the left. And a shot taken right into the grasps of Pollard. That was a blast by Harden Diggy. Great job by Jeremy Pollard. And like you said, an absolute crusher of a hit. But Pollard is there to scoop it up, no issue. On the near side, Utah Valley works with it, but can't make anything happen. So we approach the 88th minute, or minute number 87. Cleared down there. Two and a half minutes to go. She see you looking to hold on for their seventh win of the season. Just looking to keep it on their side. And into the box, an opportunity for Dummy on Herman, not there. So two minutes remain. This defense has been stellar in the second half. Don't forget to snag that 25% off deal at the Lope Shop. Go to lopeshops.gcu.edu for the best GCU gear to show off your low pride. Use promo code SPORTS25 to get 25% off for being a GCU TV viewer. Lopes up. Looks like now it's heating down. He's going to get up. He's 88-25 reads the clock. Say sends this one into the corner. That's a smart play, really. Take as much time to get it up as possible, and that's a good job. That game awareness. And a player down, but can't really afford to stay down because they got to get it up. And hurry, I mean, we saw that shot by Harden Diggy. Would have been placed better, could have been better. Better threat, but not quite. And just about, well now exactly one minute to go. GCU just needs to stay buckled down. In the box, bouncing around there. Trying to clear, clear it out. It. In front, it's off the crossbar! Off the crossbar! Gotta clear it. That was flush necked. And now, a man down and saved by Pollard again. Off the rebound, they score! They have scored! In the eighth, in the 90th minute, with 47, 37 seconds to go. Like I said, they had to clear the ball, and unfortunately, GCU doesn't, so they don't. They give Utah Valley an opportunity in the box, and you see there why you've got to keep the defense strong in the last few seconds. And this entire field, entire stadium, and I can assure you up here in the booth, we are completely shocked, as now we've got a tied game. We need a center back in.
So the game now tied up in the 89th minute. Two to two. A last second score by Utah Valley. And I talked about the defense staying strong. Had to clear the ball out. They couldn't. And then Utah Valley with an open opportunity and they take big time advantage of it. And you can tell the air has been taken out of this stadium. Shocked. The goal is gonna be the first on the year for Chandler Badley. My gosh. The shot went in and the keeper wheel right. Great save by Wheelwright. GCU. A massive lapse, and that is. You yeah, absolutely cannot have that, especially for a team on the outside looking in for tournament contention. That is an enormous mistake. So we will go to overtime. 2 2. We'll be back from GCU Stadium. Mission. Our Division I men's basketball team is stacked with talented veterans and international star athletes. See every exciting matchup and experience our rise from college athletes of the dream to champions. Here we come. Our purpose, our season, our time. We are Lopes Rising. Catch all the family friendly excitement. Limited season tickets available. Get them now to lock them in for generations to come at LopesTickets.com. Don't miss out. Thanks for watching GCTV. Go Lopes. Welcome back. It looked like the Lopes had this one in the bag. And then 89-23, a goal scored by Chandler Badley. And now we have a 2-2 draw into overtime. Well, I talked about making sure that the defense in the box stayed strong coming into halftime. And you give Utah Valley an opportunity to score and even with just a few seconds remaining on this on the second period clock they were given the opportunity and they capitalized Lopes had to clear the ball they couldn't clear the ball and and we are again we find ourselves in overtime for I don't know it feels like the yeah. fifth time it's, <laughs> hopefully GCU can somehow manage to win it but Man, it's, it's, just, it's an absolute shocker. This is the, literally the final seconds. All GCU had to do was make sure they clear the ball away from the box. And unfortunately, it winds up being a goal for Utah Valley. And now we find ourselves in overtime. Well, it's just the same thing, just a different day, just a lapse. I mean, it just seems like this Lopes team gets too comfortable. And then... And here it is, this off chaotic play. I mean, it started even off the crossbar, and then Guy Lamy had the shot, and then Badly right there. Seventh time GCU men's soccer has gone into overtime. Seventh time. They've done it before. They've won in OT before. They, they beat UC Riverside in overtime. They beat Oral Roberts in overtime. Of course, they tied in double overtime against... Seattle uh, on Friday night. Exactly, yeah. against Seattle University. It's It's got to be frustrating. I mean, it's frustrating for get, us, as you can hear it in the boot. I mean, not, it's more, for me, it's just more of a shock. And all the, they, we, we, I had, we praised the defense for being so great all game. And it's just one opportunity missed. Well, we will be right back for the start of the overtime period right after this break. My name is John Slack, I'm a right back and I'm from Mansfield, England.
second favourite sport. Honestly, I'm not very good at anything else. <laughs> Most embarrassing stuff. There's quite a lot of One Direction on there. That is quite embarrassing. Best part about campus, everyone's close together. It's, all, it's just like a big family when you walk around. My favourite food is Indian. And my favourite dish is chicken tikka masala. Favourite movie would have to be Warrior with Tom Hardy. I'll, I'll imitate Amir. The Amir goes, Hi, my name's Amir. I'm from Germany, but I speak Bosnian. <laughs>
looks like Caprio down on the field. And he just got Charlie Horster in the leg somewhere. Sent in just above the box. Sasevarovic. Drac. Nice job. That one ended up finding a teammate in Jackson. Now Jackson looking to make something happen. Loses the ball top of the box and now he's still on it. Good job keeping it. Switches fields and that one is going to be off a defender's foot. Good for a GCU corner. too far, but looking for McLaughlin again. Didn't seem like it had the opportunity to go to the whole team there. But now, getting another chance here is Jella. So Say, Dean Say looking for something, and just gets it right back to Jella. Jella, that one got to the goal and wheel right, but I think he was trying to find a teammate for a header on the backside. Taken down there as Utah Valley going Ooh. forward. Will hip check by Sasevarovic. Free kick now. Now here comes Gila Me, and this one rolling towards the goal. Who's going to be called off on? Because it might be called off a lope. Yeah, it's going to be a corner. And the corner kick opportunity for Utah Valley. About two and a half to go. Three and a half to go, I should say. Is this one cleared out? Most likely looking at a second overtime period. The second game in a row. Sent in. Missed header opportunity by Utah Valley. So close. Hoffmeister, their leading scorer. GCU dodging another bullet. And it just gets past. Hoffmeister coming in on the right side. Five goals so far on the season for him. Thankfully did not make it six. Herman now coming in his draft. As Drakis works his way into the box now. A shot. Take it. Rebound. Scores! JCU has won the game. 3 2. And it's over. They did it on two overtimes. Damian Herman has different plans. Damian Herman, a great follow on that shot. Drak gets some space. It bounces off Wheelwright. And Damian Herman is there to seal the deal for GCU. Un Unbelievable excitement here at GCU Stadium. And I'll tell you what, the player of the game 
must be Damian Herman. It's definitely got to be Damian Herman finishing it off for GCU, helping their record, helping them get into the whack. And Damian Herman coming up clutch for GCU, much like he did against Riverside a while ago in September. And let's be right back here and we will wrap up this post game. GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light, so we can give our students the competitive edge they need to succeed. And now, GCU is leading in the areas of computer science and IT. We prepare students to meet the demands of the fastest growing industry through our innovative IT programs in our College of Science, Engineering, and Technology. Using the latest real-world tools and an adaptive curriculum, GCU gives students the education they need today to excel in their careers tomorrow. Join the most inventive concept in education right now and position yourself for a future in the expanding world of IT. GCU offers fast-track options with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, systems architecture, and business analytics. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. Once again, the player of the game, Damian Herman, getting the win 3-2 for the Lopes. And I'll tell you what, what a game right there. Very exciting game for GCU. Damian Herman finishing it off in overtime. GCU walking away with a great win and Man, what looked like a win before with the 2-1 lead going into the in the second half, about to wrap up the game. Utah Valley gets a last-second goal, but no problem because in overtime, somebody's going to come up clutch, and tonight it was Damian Herman. Well, the Lopes win once again. Thank you so much for tuning in. Men's soccer has one more final regular season game at home this Saturday, November 4th at 7 p.m. with pregame starting at 6.30. Watch it live on Your View Arizona, ESPN3, and of course, GCU TV. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash GCU. The Lopes 3 and the Utah Valley Wolverines 2. Have a great day, and go Lopes. <laughs>